Hello and welcome to your June mid-month update. I'm just finishing up here in Austin after an incredibly successful week for Cardano at Consensus. But of course now it's time to talk about the journey on the road to Vazel and how it's all going. Nigel, Kevin, welcome. Now Nigel, very highly complex process, lots of interdependencies. How's it all coming together? There's lots of moving parts, Tim, but it's going extremely well. I think it's worth me just talking to you now about what happened last week and where we were in terms of our evaluation on Friday. So what is the process that we're trying to go through? Well, we're pulling together over 20 different components to make sure that they work properly for the Vasil hard fork. And we want to make sure that all our community, all the principal actors, SBOs, exchanges and dApps, are all stepping in line with us and that we're working together successfully. So we brought all that together. We had a good session with our DAP community last Monday. They gave us some really helpful feedback. And then on Friday, we did an evaluation about whether we think we're in a position to hard fork the test net. And we stepped through every single different component, of whether it's ready or not. And we stepped through what our current quality status was. And we had an assessment on the sentiment what we needed to do and also had an assessment of what the impact might be on exchanges, SPOs and DAPs. So Nigel, there's obviously a lot of different elements we could talk about here, but maybe let's drill into Plutus version one, version two compatibility, the cost model, pipelining. What have we discovered so far? The way to really understand it at the top level, and then it makes it easier to do that and then you drill down. So really, if you look at it from a functional and a non-functional perspective, functionally, number one, We've got to do our regression testing against Plutus version one. What does that mean? Well, we're testing against backwards compatibility. Secondly, it's testing for the future functionality for Plutus version two, the new SIPs that we've put into place, the new functionality and how that interacts with the dApps. And then secondly, non-functionally, we have to be cautious and careful and assess what our performance is, because obviously what we've done is, is we've done a significant amount of optimization and performance improvements with pipelining, parameter updates, and other elements. As we step through all of that on Friday, there's lots of really good news. So in terms of Plutus version one functionality, a number of our components that we've tested and some of the dApps that we've working with have given us 100% green light on that regression testing capability, which is fantastic. Things are working. And what's even better than that is we've also tested the fact that it's significantly faster and it's faster from our own performance benchmarks, which is based on our network parameters to also seeing it from the front end as a DAP and where we've got some of our DAP partners working with us going end to end on their transactions. And they've got another layer of complexity and theirs is going faster as well. So that's terrific news. Now, We've seen, we obviously know the numbers. We can see the factors that we're working with in terms of the improvements in performance and optimization. Yet we can't publish those because we can't be exact. So how the mainnet interacts to how the different test nets interact are very different. But what we can say is it's, it's heavily indicative as we've seen in the past for our parameters updates in the past. So we're feeling very, very positive about the results that we're getting on version one regression and also in terms of performance. So that's terrific. So let's talk about version two, Nigel, because of course, that's the key thing over the next week or so. It's about ensuring the version two scripts are behaving as expected. And for that, we need the support of the community. We do. And we discussed this when we met up with a small user group of, of uh, the dApps a week ago last Monday. So in terms of Plutus version two, the way I think of it quite often is it's like components in a car. You have to test these different components. So you need to be able to test, you can access your reference scripts, you can get access to the inline datums. And what you've then got to do is you've got to test how those components add up together and might be used by the community to make some of the new dApps work. And it's really important to point out that actually these new components are really exciting, but it is going to change the architectures of these dApps. So it is not something that we can actually test off the shelf. So we can do it at a unit level it's more complex to be able to do it at a DAP level. So we've done a lot of work on that and we're getting the results that we want to see in terms of at the unit level and component level. But we did feel on Friday that as a team, we needed to see more end-to-end -end testing to give us a confidence in not just, you know, that everything was working correctly, but actually to make us really see how DAPs might use this behavior. 
because even though we've invented it, you know, as we're seeing in the mainnet right today, they can often be put into different configurations that we didn't originally expect. So that's really, I suppose, going to be the focus for the next week with another evaluation at the end of the week. That's correct. So the process we've now found is that actually, as we go through this, we line up all the components and the major actors and we do an evaluation every week. So we know we're close. We've got a very small amount of bugs and the last count was on Friday was at 20. None of these are, you know, severity one or twos, which is terrific. But when we looked at it, we said, well, if we're that high quality, why don't we hard fought the Cardano testnet? It's because actually we feel that we need to do more thorough testing around Plutus version two and more inventive testing around Plutus version two, both ourselves and also to allow our DAP companies, projects and developers the chance to do the same. Which is why, as you know, Tim, we've just sent out some communications to, to widen the audience of our Basel developer testnet. And we really need the DAPs to be put through their paces for that before we make the next decision. Yes, we do. Yes. And I think we want to be able to give those guys the opportunity to not only get access to these SIPs and these new pieces of functionality to test it at a component level, but to think how they're going to use it to actually change their architecture. And as you might imagine, they've all got quite you know significant architectures, but they can take a sub amount of that architecture and test out the components in relative version. So you can actually do a smaller transaction and use all three, and then you layer it and build it, and you can actually then start to see the results of the DAP as a whole. So thanks for that, uh, Nigel. Now, Kevin, of course, last week, we launched the new Vasil developer testnet using the new node. Tell us about that. Absolutely, Tim. So things are progressing very well. And today we have a Vasil ready version of the node, which includes reference inputs, reference scripts, input datums, collateral inputs, all the things we've promised in previous updates, as well as lots of other improvements to the networking, to the logging, and to the other components of the systems. This is all looking absolutely great at the moment. We've got lots of good test results, including from our own QA team, as well as stake pool operators and DAP developers who've been running on the dev testnet. And we're starting to get some really promising time and memory benchmarking results. I don't want to spoil the surprise too much, but watch this space. I think people are going to be very, very pleasantly surprised by what they observe from the time performance, particularly of the new node. And finally, we've got a version of DB Sync that improves the sync times and memory usage. This is incredibly important to exchanges and to our other enterprise users who are using this to monitor the Cardano network and to track the changes that are happening. And Kevin, another component that many of the community have picked up on around the Vasil release will be around the D parameter. It's quite an important moment, uh, I believe. Perhaps you can tell us about that. Yeah, so the D parameter, Tim, this is all about decentralization. So as you remember, we started off with the Shelly hard fork with the D parameter set to one, IOG was running the network using our federated nodes, and we gradually over a period of time reduced D so that state pool operators were making more and more of the blocks on the network. And about a year ago, we set D to zero. 100% of the blocks were being made by the state pool operators on the Cardano network, and that's where it stayed ever since. What's happening with the Vassal hard fork is we're going to make that permanent and irreversible. We're taking the D parameter away. It can never increase again. And this supports Cardano's journey to becoming more decentralized. And also very importantly, it means that uh, it's a very important step to the community taking on a more prominent role in operating, running and controlling the Cardano network. And that's where we're going heading forwards. Tim, before signing off, I did want to remind the community about a few things ahead of the Vasil hard fork. First of all, hard forks, they're not like turning on a switch. People have to do things. Nothing is magical, though the hard fork combinator really acts like a bit of magic. It makes things very, very smooth for our stake pool operators, uh, makes things very, very smooth for arts. And after we've gone through the hard fork, obviously it's not going to be complete instant, but as 
More developers start to deploy their dApps on Cardano as they start to take advantage of the new features that are rolled out and the new improvements that we're making to the throughput of Cardano. You will see a greater degree of efficiency and reliability in the apps in and in the network. So things looking great, just be aware it's not going to be completely instantaneous. So thanks for that, uh, Kevin. Now, Nigel, why don't we wrap up with a bit of a summary? Where are we now and what are we going to be focused on over the next week? Where we are now is in a really positive place. We've done a lot of work. We've tested a significant amount. We've got a very high quality release in our Basel dev testnet, but we are going to be doing a lot more work in terms of testing Plutus version two scripts and having our DAP partners start testing and interacting with those Plutus version two. What we'll do towards the end of the week is we'll set up another evaluation point where the whole team comes together, representatives from the exchanges, SPOs and DAP community will be with us and we'll run through the whole component list and the whole situation and make another evaluation whether we're ready to hard fork the Cardano testnet or not. So Nigel, Kevin, thanks as ever for those updates. And also thanks to all the developers who are currently testing their dApps on the Vazel developer testnet as the Vazel upgrade approaches. We'll see you again for another update very soon.